What's good, everybody? It looks like the Washington Wizards are staying in the DMV. So we're going to talk about that, and we're going to get into some past comments tonight. We're going to chop it up with you guys like we always do next on Locked On Wizards. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Scott, again, with my guy, the real Ed Oliver. And we appreciate you guys making Locked On Wizards your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. And today, we're going to talk about the Washington Wizards are going to be here for a little bit, at least till 2047, but did not stop Ted Leonsis from talking to the governor of Maryland. So we're going to talk about that, uh, look at some past comments, and do a preview for tomorrow night's game at home against the Brooklyn Net. So let's get into it. Uh, a couple articles here. This is through uh, Legion Hoops via uh, broadcast Ben on Twitter, a.k.a. X. And this is the report. Washington, D.C.'s attorney general will not permit the Washington Wizards to move to the Commonwealth of Virginia. The Washington Wizards must remain in D.C. until at least 2047. Then the next report came out uh, via Dan Diamond. Uh, Ted Leonsis, the owner of the Washington Wizards and the Washington Capitals, has talked with Maryland Governor Wes Moore about moving the teams north as his Virginia deal stalls. So, he, <laughs> he can't knock him from trying, right? Um, so, obviously, the Wizards are going to be here for a while. We kind of, both of us kind of said that from the get-go, that we didn't really see the deal with Virginia going through. Um, so, how should the fan base and really the city of D.C. feel about him staying? And how much do you read into the, um, him reaching out to the governor of, of Maryland? Well, I think you're in a uh, mute, man. Yeah, it's clearly he keeps asking and asking, trying to find ways to move to either Virginia or Maryland. He really wants to move to Virginia, but the politicians have really blocked him. I think there was one politician, I think her name was Luis Lucas, and then uh, another politician, Brian Schwab. Schwab, uh, there's an article saying he sent a clear message to Wizards and Cavs owner Teleonsis this week. Uh, saying that you're legally stuck here for another two decades. So a lot of the politicians have blocked it, which is good news to me. And uh, I clearly, I, w- I, w- I would like them to stay in D.C. I just think they, they should be in D.C. I think it's just great for the city. It's great for businesses in D.C. It's a, it's a e- it's easy to get to the games. Um, metro is very metro, very easy to get through, get there through the metro. I think the stadium is still a fine stadium. I don't think there's really not anything wrong with it. I think it's still... They, they made upgrades to it, updates to it. So it's not like FedEx Phil where it's falling apart. You got sewage, you know, coming out of, or water coming out of this, the uh, ceiling. Very nice lighting inside the stadium. You know, you got the the uh, the ultra section and you got the new section where Ted is, you know, overcharging people for the experience. I forgot the name. Was it the Hennessy loss and stuff yeah. like that? So it's still a good experience, even though the team is, is you know, struggling this year record-wise. I, I still think it's a good experience to the point where they really don't need to move um but i know he he wants to really really move to virginia just so he could have his own like kind of city and town uh even though they kind of really have their own town with chinatown but um yeah it's 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 good to hear that so 2047 is a long time uh that they're gonna have to stay here in dc and i think that's good news i think they they need to be in dc and it's good to see them staying in dc so um yeah it looks like a lot of the politicians are blocking it and because uh, I remember, I can't remember her name. I, like I said, I think her name is Luis um, Lucas. Yeah. She even posts like memes on Twitter and like stuff where she's trying to be funny, where she's been blocking some of the stuff that Ted Leonsis has been trying to do. And so trying to do where he's been trying to move. And like I said, when I, I really thought it was going to happen at the first, the beginning, I thought they really were going to move to Virginia. And I was just becoming fine with the move. I was just learning. I was just like, OK, you know, if this is going to happen, I just have to you know, just, just move on with it and yeah. understand that, you know, it would have been a nice, nice venue and a nice city. And I, I did like the drawing of it and the whole um, pictures and stuff. I thought it was a cool idea, you know, just looking at it, but I would have rather it be in uh, DC and it's going to be in DC for a long time. And I would have just hated for the stadium to be vacant. Only the mystics would have been in there. A lot of businesses yeah. would have closed down. So uh, I think it's good news that they're staying in DC. 
Yeah, I think it's good news they're staying DC because they're the Washington Wizards. They're not the Virginia right. Wizards. They're not the Maryland Wizards. You know, they're the Washington Wizards. So you should definitely be in your home base. But I'm, I'm gonna be a hundred percent about my response to this. I'm gonna be a totally transparent here, um, like I always do. <laughs> like I know I am. Um, yeah, I think it's a good move, but. I'm not gonna get political, man, but I say this, man. Like the whole clown show behind all the politics behind it, like blocking this and everything, you know, it's just so unfortunate. That's the people that run this country. But getting back to sports, um, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I, I like them where they're at. I, I didn't really see anything wrong with Capital One. Um, the area, you know, I mean, I, 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 I see it from both sides. Now, we we talk about this a lot, man. Um, me personally, you know, the big reason why he's trying to move out of there, obviously, crime is is getting high carjackings, murder, the whole nine. Um, me, Percy, I was raised in the D.C. area, went to D.C. so many times and made my parents mad. I mean, I, I love the city, always have, always will. I've never had a problem. You know, um, I, I just never had a problem. You know, I go to Wizards game. You know, like I said, now we got media conditions. We go down there, never had an issue. You know, I'm down there 11 o'clock midnight. Never had an issue. But I'm a big old biracial dude with tattoos who's done two toes on rack. And I just got that look on my face like, yo, just, what's up? I mean, Looking at it from the perspective of other people's, like let's be let's be really honest about the area, man. Now, what do I notice when I'm down there? The, the, look, nothing against anybody who smokes, man, but the, the prevalent smoke smell of marijuana around the Capital One Arena and the whole area, especially when you come out the the metro, is so thick that I mean, if I'm a family man, I mean, yeah, I probably wouldn't bring my kids to a game. I'm being honest, like. The reason why he wants to make the move and he's using the leverage to get out of there is, and I get that. I'm not going to fault him for that, man, because let's be real. What he, what he highlighted was what's wrong with this, what's going on in the city. And yeah, I do believe that the Washington wishes to stay. Cause like I said, they are an institution of, the, of Washington, DC, you know, so they should definitely be in DC. Now I don't know why people were so upset that they were potentially going to Virginia because people forget that used to be in Merlin. I mean, they were out there in Landover before they even came to the city. So, I mean, it is what it is on that front, but you know, looking at the situation, I, you know, not even like looking at it from a political standpoint or even looking at it from crime. I never thought it was going to be a move because look, they just built the what the um, the practice facility and where the go go and Mystics play over there in, in 2018. So what were you planning on doing with that facility? And and you know, the Mystics they're not a big enough draw to be the lone occupant of Capital One. So I feel like that the whole logistics and the vision of it was kind of sloppy. Because he didn't really take into account the, you know, the facilities. You know, you can't just leave a facility that's, that was built over there in 2018 in St. next to St. Elizabeth's Hospital. Because look, believe it or not, these arenas they draw, they have jobs. You know, they provide jobs and they provide income. And you know, believe it or not, the facility over there that where the Mystics and the Go Go play and where the Wizards practice, it brings the economy to the area. And if anybody who's driving through the area knows that the area needs more attention, so. A banning of that would have definitely hurt the area. And let's be real. It would have just it would have demolished area, man. Um, so I think it's good that they keep that around, keep definitely keep people employed, uh, keep money flowing through that community. Uh looking at cap one again, the mystics aren't a big enough draw to be the low known occupant. So I mean, I think the decision was, was you know, obviously a money decision, you know, is a business decision for him because there's money in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And like I said, the clown shows because you know, Youngkin, he was, you know, the face over there would. Ted Leon says everybody was happy and it was just politicians trying to be politicians and it, it, they really didn't take into account anybody but themselves and the fan base. And it was just, I didn't see them going anywhere. And that's just me being a hundred man, you know, just stay where you're at, take the $500 million that uh, Muriel Bowser is trying to give you, renovate the Capital One Arena and call it a day. You know, he's he definitely trying to use it as leverage, but look, <laughs> you look like the fool now because now, you know, you, you went over there and talked to the governor of Merlin, man. And, it's just call it like it is. You're going to be here for a minute and it's just bro. Let's, let's, let's keep the focus on the team building this franchise up into a contender and go and this let's go ahead and just scrap it. Because again, I don't think neither one has really thought it was a realistic goal. It just, it was, it was, a, it was a money thing. And I get it from a business standpoint, Ted Leonce is a business man, you know, especially, you know, he's, he owns how many, you know, I mean, people forget he, he owns Eagle one, um, Eagle bank arena right there in Fairfax, the home of George Mason basketball. So, you know, he's a businessman. He's thinking about making money, and I get all that. But people got to also realize, you know, if you look at the past owner, A. Poling, man, I mean, what he did for this community, what he did for the city, a lot of his business practices had the people of D.C. in mind. And I, I think he, uh, Ted Leonce has kind of lost sight of that, is that you need to realize that the city hasn't always been treated well by his local government and that, the, you know, Capital Arena, Nationals Park, 
um even fedex man they provide jobs they provide opportunities to the community that a community that very you know without these institutions would not have had a, jobs so in, you know anybody goes to nas park knows the importance of nas park what it does for the navy yard what it does for anacostia it's very important it provides a lot of jobs same thing with audi field where the dc defenders are and, and dc united soccer so um keep them in the city man was was focused on putting money into the city you know i'm from virginia i get it you from maryland you know our folk you know we're not residents of dc but you know I, like i said as a kid i've loved the city since day one since the first day i crossed that border i'm in, i was in love with dc man and i want to see them keep money in the city you know virginia look virginia gonna be virginia man look they got they they have enough over there they're gonna be all right man you know between all the malls and you know they're gonna be all right so um i think it's a good move that he stays in dc man yeah, I think so too. I know the comments back when we talked about it when it first came up, and yeah, it was hilarious when uh, T- Youngkin was just celebrating him and Ted. They were so <laughs> yeah. happy; it was like a ribbon cutting kind of there. So they really thought it was going to happen. You know, they made they made me think it was going to happen. But um, every time I talk about traffic, you know, people in the comments they always disagree with me. But you know, I, I and I'm not going to complain about traffic to go to Virginia because. You know, you go to Commanders games in Maryland and you go to Commanders games in D.C. So there's a big fan base in Virginia. So I'm not going to say it's selfish, but it is a little selfish of me if I complain about traffic. And, you know, we have a big fan base from Virginia, including yourself, and you guys commute to D.C. all the time. So I'm not going to say that argument anymore because I get it from you guys coming down to the games. It's hard. for it's It's not the easiest thing for you guys to come to games all the time, you know, you got that, that traffic coming to Virginia to DC is it can get bad. It can get really bad. So, um, but I just think from the standpoint of the team being from DC, they have a, they have a good area right there. Yeah. There is some crime here and there for sure. Definitely in that area in Chinatown. Um, they did shut down at McDonald's, but I know they built up a Chick-fil-A too. So that's been some of the comments that we've been getting as well when we talk about that situation. But, um, just, just that, that that town in Chinatown and DC. They are they are giving him five hundred million dollars to support him to make upgrades to the stadium. And if they want to put you know more security around there too, then that's something that DC they need to definitely help him out with as well. But um, you know, I, I get Ted has this dream to move out of there. He got the money from Qatar as well. You know, so that was a deal. That was probably a calculated yeah. deal to make a move as well and build a new stadium. And he, he just. He wants his own thing, and I get it. You know, it's cool. It's kind of like, and I hate the Cowboys, but, you know, they have, like, their own town around the yeah, stadium. Like, yeah. they have their own things like hotels, yeah. um, you know, nightlife, whatever. Um, he wants it to make it a, a huge experience when you come down there. You probably even build another casino or something like that, like another MGM type of thing. You know, he probably had something like that in mind if he did move to Virginia. So there's a lot of things that Ted wants to get done, but – yeah, uh, when it gets political, it's blocking it. And then people in Virginia, too. Like, I know we talked about it, just the residents there, they may not want a stadium to be yeah, built yeah. in that area, too. So it's not just about what he wants. It's about the people that live in that area. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. But, you know, for the next two decades, next for a long time, it's going to be in D.C. Yeah, they're going to be here till at least 2047, man. So right. <laughs> did you see that at home, man? Because we're here, man. So I definitely think it's a good move overall. Definitely a good move, man. But let's not get it twisted. Things do need to change in the area. I mean, let's be real. It did highlight the fact that things do need to change in the area. You know, they need to start putting money into the surrounding area. I think that's a perfect comparison. And especially look at FedEx, uh, FedEx Field or whatever it's going to be called, the Chili Bowl over there with the uh, Commanders right, play. Yeah. Um, they need to put a lot more money in PG County in, in the surrounding area, man. You know, I mean, like I said, they provide jobs, but we need to start investing in the communities around these arenas. So I definitely think it's a good move. And look at that traffic real quick. I mean, I can't say too much either, man. I mean, yeah, it's about an hour and 40 minutes, but anybody who's from the Tidewater area and they're very loyal fans of the teams up here, man, that's hours, man. So I definitely, definitely, definitely realize, you know, Definitely a lot of respect goes down to them, man. So uh, we're going to we're gonna get into some past comments, man. Y'all been asking for us to answer. And we're going to look at a preview for tomorrow. Nice game against the Brooklyn Nets in Cap 1. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. So passion, drive, and patience. 
What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive, right? eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 120 million parts for your ride or die, or your number one ride or die, that is, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guarantee Fit, your, fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors... You're burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay guarantee fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn out a vine with all that shouting? <laughs> Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you Every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Logged on Sports Today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. So let's get into some um, past comments, and then we're going to get into a preview, guys. Um, and look, kind of look at the schedule going forward. Yes, sir. Let me put these comments real quick here. I know um, all the time I say that we're going to read comments <laughs> and I never do. So uh, we're definitely going to get to that today. There was, there was a couple of comments from last night that we didn't get to. Not a lot, but about two or three here. Um, let's see here. It was um, No Breaks New. Shout out to No Breaks New. He says... What's up, bros? Rashawn Holmes is the muscle. Jared Butler could back up Jordan Poole once Tyus is gone next year. Jordan Poole found himself as a point guard. Corey's a legit rotation piece. Jordan Poole coming back like Kendrick Lamar did on a trade. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot to uh, to unpack there in that comment. So I guess we'll go one by one. He says uh, Rashawn Holmes is the muscle. Butler could be back up. To Jordan Poole once Tyus is going next year. I guess we'll start with that one, then we'll get to the other two comments that he has here. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, I'll go first. Shout out to No Breaks New. He's been a, a loyal subscriber for a long time. He has his own podcast. I was a guest on his podcast. We got to get him on the show soon as well to get his takes on the Wizards season. Uh, he <clears throat> So, Rashawn Holmes, yeah, he's been playing really good basketball. Yeah. I think in the winter he's averaged like 15 rebounds or something like that. I've seen that. Somewhere I gotta I gotta look that up and see if that's accurate. But uh, he's playing really well. And we talked about that last night where when uh, when he was traded for Gafford or when Gafford was traded for him, I, I initially thought it was gonna be a downgrade, but he's been just as good as Gafford, if not better, some nights. And Gafford has played really well too. So I'm not gonna knock Gafford at all because Gaff has played really well with the Mavericks. Like, like I talked about last night, he's been setting records. But looking at Rashawn Holmes, the last couple of games, he's been a he's been a double double machine. So. The Raptors game, he had 15 points, 14 boards. Against the Kings, where we won, he had six points and 16 boards. That was against the bonus. And then uh, last, last night, he had 14 points and 15 boards against Andre Drummond and Nikola uh, Vucevic against some legitimate bigs that are not just lean, smaller guys. And the knock on Gafford, I, wanna keep, I don't want to keep knocking on Gaff, <laughs> is that he struggled against bigs that were you know bigger than him or just as big as him or stronger than him. That was kind of his downfall where with Sean Holmes and Marvin Bagley, those two guys, it looks like they're holding their own. And they're actually making it tough on guys. Like Vucevic only had nine points. And I'll give credit to Rashawn Holmes defensively for that too, man. He's making it tough on guys. Had one block, two blocks against the Raptors and one block against the Kings. Um, and he's finishing really well against the rim. I mean, at the rim. Him and Jared Butler, they got good chemistry. So, I mean, Rashawn Holmes has been playing really, really well. He plays with a lot of toughness. And he's not the most athletic guy in the world, but, you know, he does what he needs to do to finish around the rim and, and, uh, and get to the basket as well. So um, I love what Rashawn Holmes is doing. Marvin Bagley hit a mid-range jumper. Yeah. So uh, I have nothing but good things to say about Rashawn Holmes, man. I, I, I like like what he's doing. He has another year under his contract, so he's going to be here next year. And, uh, you know, if we do draft a big man, you know, he's a guy that he can learn from as well, him and yeah. Bagley. So, um I have nothing but good things to say about Rashawn Holmes. He's been a he's been a pretty big surprise for me. I thought he was just going to ride the bench when he yeah. came here. I thought he was just going to get 
you know, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Cause when he first got here, it didn't look, he looked like it was a little, he was coming along a little slow, but it takes time when you get traded. Uh, Bagley, he, he wouldn't, his first game coming in, he, it didn't take him long at all to get ready. And Rashawn Holmes, it took him a little while yeah. to get going. So that's, uh, that was just the only reason why I was surprised by Rashawn Holmes. But Rashawn Holmes has been a great, great addition to the team. Oh man, I'm with you. Had no expectations of Rashawn Holmes, man. I mean, he struggled in Dallas, but you know, you saw the glimpses in the potential in Sacramento, but had no expectations because at the time Marvin Bagley III was playing good basketball. So I figured Rashawn Holmes would probably be the backup center and he'd just pretty much just be there for minutes. But he is playing at a high level. And I mean, like we see the dog in him. I mean, he's a dog. I mean, he gets in there and he in, in, in that paint, man, and he's he fights with bigger centers, man. I mean, he's had some impressive rebounds. So I like what I see from Rashawn Holmes. Absolutely. He has definitely been playing at a high level. And Marvin Bagley III, you know, we said it the last episode, all comes down to fit. You know, what is the best fit? And he looks like he has definitely resurrected his career here in D.C. Now, looking at the um, their salaries for next year, Marvin Bagley III will be here as a fully guaranteed contract for 12.5. So he'll definitely be here. But Rashawn Holmes, is what a, he has a player option. So I think that he might – I mean, uh, let's see. He's making – if he takes his option, he'd be making 12.8. So maybe that's too good to pass up at this stage in his career. You know what I'm saying? So um, maybe you don't go center in the draft because you'll have both them and Tristan Vucevic. So maybe you look at other areas like point guard, maybe add, add another forward. But um, if he doesn't take his player option, then, you know, maybe, maybe you make that move to center. It really depends on that. But uh, like I said, Martin Bagley III playing the high level, you know, his shooting, his inside scoring, his rebounding, his defensive prowess. Um, we there's a really good under the radar moves for this team, you know, because like I said, Daniel Gafford, we both are big guy fans, man. And, you know, we can't say it enough that, you know, he will be missed. But, you know, he again, he played decent here in D.C. and he developed here. But Dallas unleashed him. I mean, you see a, a Daniel Gafford in Dallas, man, who he's I mean, his confidence is all time high. And definitely congrats, man, because, you know, when you play with Kyrie and Luca, man, you're definitely going to eat. So. Um, yeah, I think we're in good hands for the time being. They've been playing really well for this team. Oh, right, yeah, it's refreshing. And the whole rebounding thing, they won the rebounding battle. That's something that we haven't done. Uh, we didn't do that before the trade deadline until really Bagley got here with Bagley and Holmes. The formula has been rebounding. They've been able to rebound, and that's huge uh, for the Washington Wizards. Uh, the other part of the comments – he says, uh, Jordan Butler, I mean, uh, Jared Butler. Sorry, I don't want to be disrespectful <laughs> to Jared Butler getting his name wrong. Uh, but yeah, Jared Butler's been play, playing really, really well. Yeah, man. He's made, you know, he's making easy, he's getting easy baskets for Bagley and also Rashawn Holmes. 13 assists. Um, he's getting to the basket himself. He's been able to get downhill and score. Uh, so it's always good to see our point guard to be able to get downhill and get to the paint. That's something we've kind of struggled with, struggled with with our point guards ever since John yeah. Wall left. Uh, of course, he's not as explosive as John Wall, but you know he's he's got he's a he's a guy that can get into the paint and make a lot of easy easy looks for other guys and create for himself too. So uh, Jared Butler's been great, man, and he's he's hit some big three point shots. So he's a guy that's definitely not scared of lights. You know, went to Baylor, won a championship, so we know he's he's ready for the big moments, and that's. That's the way he's played. Um, there was like a clip of him dancing and celebrating yesterday after the win, which was pretty funny. So <laughs> I love with Jordan. Jared, I don't know why I keep saying Jordan, but Jared, let me put some respect on his name. Jared Butler has been great uh, ever since he's gotten playing time. And for him to be, a, a, you know, a guy that's been moved up from the G yeah. League, from the go-go team. So it's always good to see young guys that we get to develop. Uh, so you got to keep him on the roster next year and give him more playing time. I mean, don't feel bad at you, man. I still call Andrew Wiggins Anthony Wiggins, man. So don't even worry about it. Um, right. Jared Butler, I think he definitely has a place in his team next year, man. I mean, he what was a 13 assists last game. I mean, right. he can definitely be the backup point guard. Now, obviously, looking at that, a lot of decisions on this team are going to come down to decisions made. You know, obviously, Tyus, he, um, last year, you know, he's going to be unrestricted, uh, unrestricted free agent. So, I mean, we could do a sign and trade, but. I mean, is he really that hot of a commodity that you're going to be able to do that? I don't think so. I think he's gone. And I think that you probably have seen the last of him in the Wizards jersey, in my opinion. I think they're going to give a you know, look at Jordan Poole and whether he can hold down the point and whether Jerry Butler could be that backup point guard. So, I mean, you know, that's another question. You know, Jordan Poole going forward, is he our point guard of the future? So that kind of, you know, do you still go out there and draft a, a Rob Dillingham or do you still pick up an Isaiah Collier because – you know, so there's a lot of questions with this team, man. But 
we have the capability. We have a lot of leeway to make these decisions, which, you know, if you look at the last couple of years, we didn't have this leeway. So um, it's, it's good to be in this position. But Jared Butler, you know, whether it's backup point guard or whether it's just depth, he, in my opinion, he's deserved, you know, a place on this team going forward next year. Right. Yeah. So the thing with Ty is, is like the, you want to get some assets back for him because, you look at the Porzingis trade, and it's like, you know, if he yeah. leaves for nothing, it's kind of like you trade a Porzingis for a guy that you didn't even keep, and or you didn't keep him, and you didn't get anything for Tyus. So it's not like you didn't you didn't really make the most out of the Porzingis trade if, if you see Tyus leave for nothing. That's unfortunate because they had a deal on the table where they had they got all for five second round picks, but they wanted a first round pick. And then now he he may walk for nothing, but most likely, I, I mean, who knows if they get a sign and trade done? But I think they 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 may make something like that happen. Um, I don't think they'll bring him back. I think you know he's going to try to go somewhere else too, as you see, where he's just getting DMPs. Where I think it's kind of like like I said, I don't want to just speculate or assume, but yeah. most likely he's not playing. <laughs> like if it was if they were in the playoffs, I feel like Tyus probably would be playing. Yeah, and we'll see. I think we got a couple reports on who's going to play tomorrow. And who's not? I got to look at those injury updates, but we're going to transition into the preview for the Nets game. But before we do that, today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences to smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as a free. As free and live TV, whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Today's episode is also brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class-exclusive Google built in your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment, infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. The 2024 Nissan Armada as, as well will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Pictured a, picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in the first-class luxury style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Nissan Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, so the Washington Wizards are playing the Nets tomorrow night. Uh, let me double check if this game is at home. I'm pretty sure it is at home. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it's at home at 7 o'clock. Most likely we'll start around 7 10. Uh, so the Nets, let me pull up some numbers here and just see how the Nets have been doing this season. But this is, they have a chance to win four games in a row. They really have a chance to win five because if, if they can win this game and beat the Pistons, that would be five wins in a row which is something that we have not seen in a long time from the Washington (laughs) Wizards. This uh, three-game winning streak is the first one of the whole season. They they currently have the longest winning streak in the Eastern Conference right now. The Brooklyn – the Wizards have the longest winning streak in the Eastern Conference right now. Now, the Nets are 27-45. and They most likely will not be making the playoffs. So they are having somewhat of a disappointing season. Uh, Last year, they did make the play-in or playoffs. Um, that was really, yeah, they made the playoffs last year, but, um, looking at them this year, they got Macau Bridges. They are, uh, they're a terrible free throw shooting team. They're 27th in the league. 
They are middle of the pack at three-point percentage, like bottom half, 18th. Two-point percentage, they're bottom in the league at 26th. Uh, points per game, at 25th, so they struggle to score. Ben Simmons is done for the season. So they got a lot of, you know, yeah, Ben Simmons is done for the season, <laughs> which is not a surprise. Uh, so they have a lot of weird things going on. They actually turned down a trade for Jalen Green, which they're kind of looking back on now. Like, dang, they should have just traded for Jalen Green because Jalen Green is playing really good basketball. Defensive rating, they're 19th. Offensive rating, they're 22nd. Um, so they, they're really just a, a middle-tier, bottom-tier team. But the Wizards have struggled against the Nets so far this year. But uh, what are some things you're looking forward to this Nets game? And I'm going to look up the injury report as well because uh, I know they, they said a couple guys are already out for tomorrow night. Yeah, um, I, I get, the last that I saw, Kuz is good. That's what the mm. last I saw. Uh, but the current one right now, Eugene is still day-to-day. Tyus is still day-to-day. And Shamit, obviously, Livers and uh, Kulabali are out. But um, like I said, I, I don't expect to see – Tyus or Shaman, I think they're going to be pretty much set for the rest of the year. But uh, kind of some things I'm looking for um, for this matchup against the Brooklyn Nets uh, is definitely the matchup between Dennis Schroeder and Jordan Poole, man. Dennis Schroeder is a known Wizards killer and a guy that has really gotten at the Wizards over the years, man, from his time and, you know, with the Atlanta Hawks and so time and time again. So definitely his, uh, his the matchup between Jordan Poole and Dennis Schroeder. Um Cam Thomas and M- Mikael Bridges, a couple guys to look at, man. Um, they, they're probably they're probably going to be the one-two punch for the Brooklyn Nets, man. So we definitely have to, you know, put some defense on him, man, because Cam Thomas can he can score at a high pitch, man. And Mikael Bridges is a three and D guy. But uh, another uh, matchup I'm looking at is Nick Claxton. Um, how do our centers play against him? Because I definitely think that this is an opportunity for the Wizards to win the battle of the rebound. Because I mean, like you said, E, and like we all know that when this team wins the battle of the rebounds. Quite often than not, we're in the game. We're in the position to win it, you know. So I definitely want to see us win the battle of the rebounds because, I mean, their bench is not the – I mean, Cam Johnson is out. Dennis Smith's out. So Lonnie Walker is your premier name, and Dorian Finney-Smith are your premier name on the second unit. So definitely want to see these young young guys in the second unit show some effort, man. Definitely, you know, definitely play to win, man, because they have an opportunity to definitely outclass your bench. So – um, I, I'm not going to predict nothing, but I, I, I think definitely mm-hmm. this is a winnable game. Now, I know, look, if we win the next two games, the Wizards Twitter is going to lose it. <laughs> I mean, people are like, oh, man, we're going to end up with a 10th pick again. You know, the people, you know, I, you know, I'm, you know, look at it. Um, we're good, man. We're not going to mess with the pick. We're still going to get the top five pick. So, just, you know, we're going to be all right, man. But I definitely think that, and especially if you if you look at the, the schedule going forward, you must well get wins while you can because after the Pistons game, you got Miami, you got Milwaukee, you got the Lakers. Now, the Trailblazers are winnable. Toronto is winnable, but Timberwolves, man, look, Anthony Edwards is about to <laughs> put some money on us, man. So, um, and then the Bulls, and then suddenly, then we end the year, the Celtics. So, we have an opportunity to kind of uh, gather some momentum you know, leading out to the next season. So, right. Yeah. Um, Cam Thomas, he did not play last game against the Raptors. It beat the Raptors 96 to 88. He didn't play because of lower back tightness. Now he could very well be available. Uh, Tyus Jones is out tomorrow night. Kyle Kuzma is going to be available. Denny's going to be available. So those, those are the things that I saw as far as uh, injuries. But, um, yeah, you brought up Mikhail Bridges. I mean, he's a Wizards killer. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, he can knock down the three. Claxton, he has 16 boards. So that's going to be a good matchup for Rashawn Holmes and Marvin Bagley as well. Schroeder had 19 points. He definitely is a Wizards killer for sure. So that's going to be a really good matchup for Jared Butler and Jordan Poole as well. Coming off the bench, Lonnie Walker yeah. and uh, Trenton Watford. He's a guy that's played pretty well against the Wizards in the, in the past because he was with the Blazers. But, uh, yeah, it's a winnable game. And this is another game uh, for development too. You know, looking for how, how Johnny Davis plays in this game. You know, does he start again? Does he get a, a, another chance or opportunity to start? Uh, I think the only reason why he started is because uh, Denny didn't play. So with Denny coming back, Johnny will probably come off the bench. But, uh, yeah, just looking at the bigs and defending the three-point line because uh, Mikhail Bridges, he shoots a lot of threes. He shot 12 threes last game. Cam Thomas shoots a lot of threes. Finney Smith shoots a lot of threes. Uh, Schroeder shot, shot seven threes. So they really, really have to defend the three-point line. And uh, Watford was two for four from the three-point line. Uh, so they really got to step out there and get out there and get back on defense, of course. And uh, just looking at some of the games against the Nets, they played them close, but they just haven't—they have not been able to pull them out 
And um, they just got to keep doing what they're doing, rebounding, get back on defense, pushing the pace, sharing the ball, that pick and roll with Jared Butler, Jordan Poole as well, putting pressure on the defense. And uh, Corey Kiss was playing really, really well too. So they just got to keep doing what they're doing. And they they should be – this should be a close game. I really yeah. think they can win it. Of course, I know that's not the end goal of the season, but uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be a very close game. <laughs> and that's so Wizards. Like, right. you know what I mean? That's so Wizards how we, we lost 58 games and now all of a sudden we got some thrust. But, um, right. I mean, I ain't mad at him, man. You know, you definitely, like I said, this team has definitely responded to interim head coach Brian Keith, man. And like I said, um, obviously we're going to interview and we should a lot other candidates for head coach, but he should definitely get an interview because he's done a great job getting a lot out of these guys, man. So um, we've had a few blowouts, but mostly it's been close games. And, you know, you see what he can do. We see what we lacked under West SL Jr. Adjustments. You know, the fact that he can flip the lineup where he needs to, you know, I like what I see from him. So, yeah, I'm with you. I'm not going to even say we well, do we win a lot or lose, but it's definitely a winnable game. So I definitely, these next two games are definitely games where you want to get a couple of good culture. <laughs> I know people get on me about culture, uh, <laughs> culture <laughs> victories. So, cause like I said, you got a couple of, you know, really hard matchups after that, man. So we're definitely gonna be tested against playoff ready teams. So um, before we roll, man, you got anything else you want to cover? We covered a lot tonight, man. Yeah, no, 35 minutes, man. Wow. Um, darn good culture for sure. Now I do want to talk about a trade. All I'm going to say, we can, we can finish this on another episode about the Porzingis yeah. trade. If they don't get anything for Tyus, if he does just walk and leave a free agency, we did get Gallo and Mascala yeah, in yeah. the Porzingis trade, and they turned that into Marvin Bagley and more second-round picks. So it's kind of like you look at it. You got something, but for Porzingis, the way he's been playing with the Celtics, you, you did want to get more out of that trade. But looking back at it, they did trade Mascala and Gallo for Marvin Bagley, which is solid, but you still want more for Porzingis. But – like I said, that's another conversation for another time. But I'm excited about tomorrow, man. It's possible four game winning streak. It's a home game, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Um, like I said, there's a whole other conversation, man. But I, you know, Tyus. I mean, he's. I'm, I'm gonna kind of say this and leaving, man. Is that um, we other teams may not value him like we do. Like we look at him like you know the best backup point guard. You know, can he start? Yes, but I, I personally, and it's not against Tyus, man, because he look he done a heck of a job in DC. Great point guard, but um. Not a lot of teams are going to be looking at him to be the f- their future starting point guard. So, I mean, I I can see him walking, in my opinion. But that's a whole another conversation for another time. But uh, we're definitely going to roll. But appreciate you guys, man. Definitely appreciate you guys rocking with us tonight, uh, tomorrow night against the Brooklyn Nets. Show your support. We'll try to get this dub, man. We'll try to get this late season momentum, and hopefully it carries over to the next season. So, again. Appreciate you guys as always. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and a free Fire TV channels app. On the Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the, the top sports stories of the day with the local experts locked on, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Hail to the Wizards and peace. See you guys tomorrow night.